What's going on YouTube? Welcome back. We're going to do a quick trigger job on a Glock, uh, Gen 5 specifically. There are a lot of threads on the internet about how to do one of these trigger jobs, the 25 cent polish job, referring to just using about 25 cents worth of polish. They talk about the con uh, contact points and we'll go over all those. There are some points in the trigger that are not addressed and I want to go over those. So to get started, the tools you're going to need, uh, I like to use one of these progressive emery files for nails. I've got a Glock uh, fixer disassembly tool. It comes in a neat three pack. There's a link down in Amazon if you want to use that. If you don't have one of these, you can use like a 330 seconds uh, Allen key or something like that. It's totally fine. I've got a little bit of Flitz metal polish. Uh, I've got a Q-tip and I've just got a little paper towel. So let's get going. Uh, first thing you want to do is going to strip the lower. We're going to start on the lower. So we're going to take our punch. We're just going to punch out the pin at the back of the grip. Punch it out at the front. Pry out your locking block. And then you can lift out the mag catch and the trigger housing and trigger bar will lift straight out. So now the frame is, is disassembled. So as far as polishing is concerned, I'm just going to hit it with the one file. I'm just going to do about five seconds because this is already polished. Okay, switch to two. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, that looks pretty good. You can see it's kind of shiny there. You can finish up with the metal polish if you like. and then buff it out. So that's got a pretty good shine to it now. You can see, very, very shiny. So that's how you polish. So that's gonna be how you polish. Now we're gonna go with where you polish. So the first place that you're going to want to polish is right here, this lifter as it interfaces with the firing pin block. So again, you're gonna uh, hit it with the progress through the file board settings, finish up with the actual metal polish. But you're not changing geometry, you're just trying to smooth the surface. This is a stamped part, so that's what you're going to want to do. Now you can actually see where metal rubs on metal. It rubs on the top of the trigger bar as it interfaces with the connector, and it slides against the face of the connector. So those are two, polish, two areas you're going to want to polish. You're going to want to polish right there. You can see the oil. This has been cleaned and oiled, so... Uh, you're going to want to polish the face of your connector. You're going to be very careful. You can't really use the emery board for this, but if you have like very super fine uh, sandpaper and some polish, you can polish that up pretty good, and that helps. You're going to want to polish the inside face of the trigger bar or right there along this surface. Everywhere it rubs against this connector, you're going to want to polish. You're going to want to polish the top of the trigger bar right there. Again, we're not changing geometry, we're just polishing and smoothing this out. Get it as smooth as you can get it so that the trigger feels nice. All right, the rest of the uh, trigger job is going to be done on the upper. So we're gonna take apart our upper now and using our handy dandy tool, there's a little plastic cup. I don't know if you can see that in there. So we're gonna put that down in there, or press down on that and then take off our back plate Back plate comes off. We can push up on the firing pin lug. We can bring out our extractor rod and spring. And then that's going to give us the ability to remove this plunger and the extractor. So I'm 
All right, so now that's totally taken apart. So where you're going to want to polish is going to be the face of the plunger right there. This is kind of dirty. So you want to give that a nice shine. This is going to go up and down inside this channel here. You could honestly polish this out very, very carefully as well. You can polish the side of this. That's not a bad thing to do either. So that it, it moves up and down very, very uh, smoothly and goes in, up and down very well. It's going to help. That's going to help the action feel smooth when you're disengaging the plunger. But we're going to go onto our striker. We're going to go onto our striker and we're going to polish the face of the striker right there and the face of the striker right there. Now this is very, very important. You're not trying to change the geometry of this edge. This is going to affect your trigger pull. You need to polish this face and this face without affecting the geometry. So you need to be very, very careful. Go a little bit easier on this than you did perhaps on the trigger bar. Where this striker mates up with the cruciform is it's going to slip past each other kind of like that. So you need to polish this edge of the cruciform and the top of the cruciform as well. Get a good shine on that so that they slip past each other smoothly. All right, so those are all the areas that are generally hit on in the 25 cent polish job. So what we're going to do now is hit on the areas that are generally not talked about specifically on the Gen 5. The face of the trigger bar right here. This is often overlooked, but if you look at how it sits inside the frame, it's actually rubbing on the side of the frame. It's especially obvious when you put the mag catch back in. When you pull the trigger, you can see that the mag catch on the right side of the frame is going to move and it rubs against this side of the frame. So that's going to introduce two more contact points that we need to polish. The face of this trigger bar needs to have a good polish on it. As you can see, mine's got a pretty good polish on it. The inside face right here of the mag release, the right side mag release where it rubs against the trigger bar, you're going to want to put a really good polish on that so it slips nicely uh, against the face of the trigger bar. And here is the bonus criteria. The inside of the frame, the trigger bar is actually rubbing on the inside of the frame. You can use this to polish the inside of the frame, the actual plastic itself. You can polish it with your nail file and get it nice and smooth and smooth it out a good bit. And I'd recommend doing that. And finally, the other little bit of bonus area that you can polish that helps smooth out the trigger, it doesn't necessarily lighten it any, but it does take some of the grit out of it, is if you look at the side of a Glock trigger, there is a plastic texture. It's not super duper smooth. You can use your handy dandy nail file and polish the top where it rubs. You can polish the top where it rubs inside the frame. You can, If you've got uh, some very fine sandpaper, you can actually polish the corresponding surface area inside the frame as well to smooth that out a good bit so there's less friction as the trigger moves back and forth. And that's going to be basically a Glock trigger job without addressing any of the springs. If you wanted to go crazy, the only other kind of options that you have is you can play with the spring weights on your striker springs. You can change out the striker for longer and lightened strikers. Uh, the jury's kind of out on what benefit those necessarily have beyond the longer ones. You can change out the spring associated with the firing pin plunger for a reduced power spring. That's popular. And the other thing you can do is buy a specialty uh, trigger housing that has a set screw that allows you to adjust the over travel once the shot breaks. That would be a full Monty trigger job for a Glock Gen 5. Uh, just doing the polishing alone and maybe changing out this connector. The connector geometry is going to be the other piece. This is a Ghost Angel 3.0 connector. It's kind of got some funky geometry. I honestly really like this. It turns it more into a rolling brake. Uh, even without affecting any of the spring weights, just using this Ghost Angel 3.0 connector actually both lightens the uh, trigger brake and changes the character of it from a mushy wall into a into more of kind of a rolling break, more like a double action auto. So I really like that. It is not like a 1911 uh, crisp type trigger, but I don't prefer that type of trigger anyway. So that might be worth checking out as well. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Hope this is of help. I'm going to put this gun together so you can see what it is to reassemble a Glock.
So there you go, guys. I appreciate you watching. Uh, let me know how that worked out for you or anything that I missed. And if you're watching it this far and you're hearing the sound of my voice, I need you to talk about the most important thing in the comments to a Glock trigger job. And that is the use of wild alternative lubricants. I want you to throw out either the biggest snake oil brands of lubricants, bacon grease, anything like that. The most outlandish, the better. As we all know, this is the internet and the comments live forever. So I want to hear you to inject your comedy into the comments and you will get the heart from the creator. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.